Hello everybody. Here I'm again. That last video, sorry, it actually, I started choking on smoke and uh, my video length ran out of time or something there. So I was just actually kind of starting a whole new topic about, well, I had mentioned the Quran is staple or stable, however, and uh, like it has remained pretty well, you know, unchanged. Um, I have no stock in the Quran. There is a little bit of information in there, but it's mostly useless information. And it's either already been covered in the scriptures, or if it's something new, it's generally like a lie. It's pretty easy to determine that. So, you know, if you're basing your religion off of the Quran, you've already been led astray. But, uh, Muhammad was led astray. Uh, my point was, though, actually, is just how the Quran is at least, I hate to say pride, but at least the Muslims could have a little bit of pride in their scriptures, knowing that there isn't like 30,000 versions. And uh, just the fact that there are so many versions of the Bible, um, you know, this to me, I'm beating a dead horse, and I've already said this like so many times, but if it was all God breathed, then why is there so many versions? And if it was originally God breathed, then why did there ever even need to be a second version, let alone a third version? And all the excuses that I get from all these religious Christians, let's call it, is just hogwash, you know, whitewash. It's a bunch of crap and uh, you could take a King James Bible that was let's say printed in 1975 and uh, it's different from the one that was printed in 1985 and it's different from the one that was printed in 1990, 95, 2000, 2001, 2002 2015, 2017, like every every couple of years, every year, every other year, they just cha change it a little bit more and change it a little bit more to the point that the King James Bible you buy today or the New International Bible you buy today is so different from the one that was printed in 1985, let's say, that, you know, it's just completely ludicrous, stupid hypocrisy to think that there's barely anything there left because there isn't you know what I mean like it's so twisted and I shouldn't even really have to even bring this up it should be just obvious to every single Christian like we got a major problem here runaway Bible everybody taking their Bible and taking it to a whole new different direction and then people trying to twist it back and bring it back the other direction and two versions get put back together as a third version, five different versions get put back together into another version, and it only takes one S to pluralize one word to change the entire meaning of a whole paragraph, or everything, see what I mean? And so you're putting faith into, like, extreme, your salvation, your eternal life or your eternity, however you want to look at it, your post-life, however you want to look at it, you're putting everything on something that is proven to be flawed. Like you just know that it is. It's impossible for... Uh, it, every single time I'm watching a YouTube video and some girl pulls up her phone and she's sitting there reading from the Bible from her phone and it's some digital and it, it's like word after word <clears throat> it's nothing but like it's got nothing to do with it's so different than what is on my paper let's say and I know my paper's flawed and that's just even more flawed or less flawed or who really knows right so what do we to do about that problem uh, 
well, I think Christ came to solve that problem when he said, he, you know, all that he said to lead you to our Heavenly Father. It's like, I'm not saying Christ was trying to lead anyone away from the Bible. I'm not saying that at all. There's a whole lot of things that Christ should have said and never did say. And uh, sometimes he just maybe copped out and wrote in the sand when he maybe should have just said it out loud. But uh, I think he was trying to really direct you towards having a relationship with the Almighty Creator yourself. Like, if you can put a whole lot of stock into these scribes or prophets, if you can base your salvation or your eternal life or your eternity or however you want to look at it on something that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John said when Matthew, Mark, and Luke weren't even there or Daniel or Zechariah or whoever anybody who wrote anything that's in the Bible like your relationship with the Almighty Creator needs to be just as good or better than theirs it should be better than theirs like Christ was just a seed the plant that comes from that is better than the one seed the plant that grows from that produces tons and tons and tons of more seeds so the plant that grows from the seed that is Christ should be superior to Christ Christ was just the one seed what grows from Christ that is far superior to Christ himself, see what I mean? And he let you know that. And you're all just settling on, like he even said, Christ even said that the seed had to die to become, you're all wanting the dead seed to return instead of becoming what the seed was to be when it became planted. None of you want to grow. You just want the seed to come back. Rapture, that. Instead of, that seed being planted, well, within you, let's say, and growing into and manifesting into something even greater than the seed was originally. Anyway, I digress. The relationship that Joseph had with God, that should be you. Why don't you have that relationship? Like the relationship Moses had at the beginning of, let's say, Exodus, the relationship that Jeremiah had, the relationship that Daniel had, the relationship that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had, the relationship that Abraham had and, and, and Jacob had. You see what I mean? Like, you need to have that good of a relationship with the Almighty Creator, like a conduit, like the Holy Spirit, right? That. Like, you need to have a relationship with the Almighty Creator that's so much better than the twisted, lying hands of the scribe. Even, okay, each translation after each translation after each translation, these scribes, these prophets, they've been dead for thousands of years, right? Hundreds of years, thousands of years, however you want to look at it, it doesn't really matter. The point is, is... Like a book that was printed in 1985 is completely different than the book that was printed in the year 2005. It's supposed to be the same book, but it's not. So, you know, like if you guys can't get on board with understanding that, you're, you're just lost. See what I mean? You have to be cognitively aware of people have messed with your book it's just a it's just a slight guideline and then you have to meditate on it you have to use discernment and enlightenment just like every single word in there is probably the god breathed but the devil has twisted things and there is a possibility that there's a lie so you need to use discernment 
in enlightenment and meditate on the whole entire thing as you read it. Don't just read it and be like, oh, it's God breathed when it contradicts itself. Like if you were just to retain some information for a little while and keep reading, you're eventually going to come to a point where you're like, wait a minute. What Paul says here contradicts what Christ says there. Right? Right. Or to take two different Bibles, one printed in the 1970s, one pr or something that's a 100, 200 years old, like, you know, Joe Biden, his thick Bible that he put his hand on and lied to the whole entire world and lied to our Heavenly Father when he put his hand on the Bible and swear, swore. Like that one was supposedly in his family since like 1776 or something. I don't remember, you know. But that Bible, it's 200 years old or whatever, is absolutely nothing like the one that you're reading on your cell phone or online or the paper printed one that was printed 20 years ago or five years ago. It's, it's not even the same. Certain details lead you, your understanding to a totally different direction. See what I mean? And yet you guys are all so positive that you have the right one. None of you have the right one. Jeremiah 8.8 8 is still the truth, no matter which one you've picked to be the right one. So all you have there is the basic gist of the information, which it's been twisted, and then you have to take it to your Heavenly Father to help you separate it out. If you haven't done that, and you're just somebody who steps up to the plate, reads something and goes, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make a YouTube 20 minute video based off of what I just read here in Daniel 9 or whatever. It isn't going to ever pan out to you well for you, see what I mean? Like, I don't lean upon the lying hand of the scribe. I don't lean upon the scribe at all. In fact, I barely ever read my Bible. And the only reason it's pertinent to me is because I'm trying to convince people who are staking everything off of it. Like, you know, eventually, hopefully pretty soon here, I will take the time to go line upon line, word upon word, precept upon precept, and we'll settle this all out. And it'll all be like a for sure thing. But when there's 30,000 different b Bibles out there, and, you know, just 15 NIVs and you know, 39 different King Jameses or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just... I pretty well nailed the Jehovah's Witnesses to the wall when they, unbeknownst, didn't know that they'd already visited me and they tried to bring me their new edition of their new Bible when they'd already given me the last edition of their last Bible. And I spent like mm, five minutes just taking the same page and the same page and seeing how many different things they had changed from something that had been printed in like 1998 versus one that had been printed in 2005 or something like that. And it's just, it's embarrassing. Like it, the Jews are kind of in, in the same boat as the Christians with this. The Muslims, at least, they haven't let anybody go in there and just start changing things. And that's happened to all of you. And, well, I mean, probably when I was 21, you know, this was so real to me that I was like, well, let's just throw them all away. Like, when I was 21, I was already kind of skimming through like five different Bibles going, man, I got five different stories here. Well, I mean, what's going on? And then, then I kind of ran into the Jehovah's Witness thing and then the Mormon thing. And I'm like, man, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't establish a relationship with the, with our Heavenly Father 
personally yourself like you sacrifice yourself to give our savior a place to dwell within you and the almighty creator is within him then you start getting the real deal then you just inside it, it's just you know right from wrong you know you know a lie and you know the truth when you hear it from other people you know a lie and you know the truth when you read it in your own bible and uh because not one person outside of like you know atheists they don't question that they believe all scripture is god breathed and it leads them astray see what i mean it just does and every preacher out there, they're doing the same thing. I only have a couple of minutes left and I kind of already want to go into a whole another story, but look, I fought for 40 years, basically, of never wanting to say a word that would accidentally lead someone astray. It is our Heavenly Father that forced me to come here and He convinced me that I'm the only one that is capable of opening my mouth without leading people astray. See what I mean? I'm here to just knock down all the false shepherds because all they do is lead people astray. That's basically everyone with a Bible and everyone with a Quran that just opens up a book and thinks that that's God breathed. But I've proven that it's not. So it doesn't matter if you sit there and read five paragraphs. It only takes two or three words to be put in there by the devil to change the entire meaning of it all. And you've led someone astray. You're led astray. And you're leading others astray. I refused and refused and refused and refused to quote unquote pick up my cross and carry it. Because I didn't want to be guilty of ever leading anyone astray. My own faith, my own salvation, my own relationship with God was all I wanted. Like I read through the Bible and read through the Bible and read through the Bible and figured out Jeremiah 8.8 8 and figured out Jeremiah 8.8 8 and was the detective and was the detective for my own good. I wasn't doing it for any of you. I wasn't doing it for some kind of reward or to become somebody or anything or anybody, anybody special or anything at all. All that I know that I have to share with you, I, I, it was like a, I seek through the, the scriptures searching for buried treasure for me, not for any of you. It was our heavenly father that said, you take that treasure to your family. You share that treasure with your sisters and your brothers. See what I mean? I'm here to the will of our Heavenly Father. I have all this information. I was selfish. I dug up all this treasure for me. That's what I dug up this treasure for. And once I had it, our Heavenly Father said I had to go share it with all of you. And none of you want it.